fixed capital, floating capital, valuation of fixed assets and floating assets. Dear students, today we will discuss about as to how to deal with fixed capital, floating or circulating capital and valuation of fixed assets and floating assets. Capital is spoken as of fixed and floating or circulating according to its nature. To the extent to which it consists of assets which are intended to be held by way of permanent equipment for the purpose of being employed in the production of revenue, it is fixed. And the assets representing such fixed capital are termed as fixed assets. Thus, the fixed assets of a manufacturer would be land, factory building, fixtures, plant, machinery, loose tools and patents. Circulating capital, on the other hand, is represented by that which has been acquired for resale or is constantly changing or is capable of constantly changing its nature such as stock in trade, stock in course of production, cash, book debts, bills receivable, etc. But what is fixed assets in one business may be floating assets in another and the proper classification of assets must therefore depend upon the nature of the particular business. Thus, land would be a fixed asset to a manufacturing concern whereas to an estate or land company whose business is to deal in land and whose income is thus derived from the purchase and sale of land, it becomes a floating asset. Whereas machinery would be a fixed asset to a manufacturer who has acquired to equip his factory to a machinery dealer, the same would represent his stock in trade and would therefore be a floating asset. Motor vans of a dairy company are its fixed assets, while to a firm dealing in motors, the same would be a floating asset. Horses belong to a tramway company are fixed assets, while they would be floating assets to a horse dealer. In a railway company, the fixed capital expenditure will consist of land, stations and other structural works, permanent way, engines, wagons, carriages and other rolling stock, etc. In an electric lighting company, the fixed capital expenditure will consist of land and buildings, plant, mains including cost of laying, transformers, motors, electrical instruments and meters, etc. In a gas company, capital expenditure will be represented by land and buildings, plant and machinery, storage works and other structures, mains and service pipes including cost of laying, meters and cost of license and promoting special act if any. In a rubber company, expenditure in connection with the land and buildings, machinery and other permanent works, development expenditure incurred on the preparation and planting up of fresh areas and that incurred in connection with the upkeep and maintenance of planted areas which have not yet reached maturity will be treated as fixed capital expenditure. In a colliery company, the fixed capital expenditure will consist of land and buildings, underground and overhead plant and machinery, wagons, cost of driving, tunnels and sinking shafts and all other development expenses. In a hotel company, the fixed capital would, re would be represented by premises, furniture fittings, glass and crockery, cutlery and plates, beds and table linen and kitchen utensils. Valuation of fixed as and floating assets. As fixed assets are held not with a view to resale but are acquired by way of permanent equipment to enable the concern to earn profits for a period of years by their use, they are valued at original costless an estimated amount of deterioration such assets are deemed to have undergone in each period owing to the use made thereof. On the other hand, as floating assets are produced or acquired by a concern in the course of its business and are held with a view to realize or immediate realization into cash, they should always be valued on the basis of either cost or market price, whichever is lower at the date of the balance sheet. In other words, whereas fixed or permanent assets are unaffected by market fluctuations and are always valued on the standpoint of their utility to the concern owning them, the values of floating or circulating assets are always modified by market fluctuations for the reason that as it is the intention of the concern to convert these assets into cash, they should not be assessed in the balance sheet at more than they are likely to realize even though they may have cost more. The further necessity of clearly in distinguishing between fixed and floating assets is still more 
felt in the case of companies which are obliged to present their periodical accounts under the double account system whereby fixed assets and liabilities are shown in the quite a different statement to the one in which the floating assets and liabilities appear in the next lecture we will discuss about income and expense account and the receipts and payments account